Hello community, quite a fascinating topic about the integration of future AI system in the global healthcare system, or at least in your national healthcare system. So medical healthcare, pharmacy, integration of AI will be the topic. And you know, in one of my last video, I already told you half of the story. Because we question here, can LLMs answer medical questions correct? And I showed in this video, oh yeah, they are really good. You can train them for the medical exam questions. They are excellent in an AI lab at university in a controlled environment. But guess what? Now we move to another question. Can LLMs effectively assist real human users in medical decision making? And we will start with the professional that you encounter at the hospital, all the doctors, all the specialists, all the support staff, even administration in clinics, whatever. How can I help them? And then we'll move on to the general public. And we will have a look at a new study by the University of Oxford that show quite a lot of normal people at home use AI because they cannot afford access to healthcare. So how do real users use AI and what have we to learn when we build the AI system? And I can tell you there's a lot of things going wrong. So if you code an AI system, if you build an AI system, at the end of this video, you'll find two recommendations. You have to be careful. You see, this is now a crucial distinction if I ask now the second question, because now I'm moving to a safe and practical AI integration in healthcare. And healthcare is so much more than AI. Healthcare touches so many aspects of human civilization. So let's open up the video and let's have a look at this. As I told you, if we're in the AI lab, if you're at the university, hey, GPT-4, Lama-3, Commander Earth, demonstrate beautiful, high accuracy in medical conditions, 95% on those medical tests that we know for four or five years. What a performance. The moment we touch the real world, we have used by real human participants, their performance crumbles, deteriorates, crashes down to about 3%. What happens? There's now a beautiful study by the University of Oxford that showed that, and they used human participants, close to 1,300 participants, and you had an LLM that assisted those humans. And you know what? The results were really amazing because all those participants with LLM, where you thought, hey, they must have now a little bit more experience with the LLM, the LLM should support them. No? They found con with a control group the same performance like people doing internet search. So what is the value of an AI for medical? Nothing. Today, AI system completely fail. Yes, you see maybe in the news one or two reports that are pushed. But if you do a study with 1,300 participants, the result is rather dry. Performing no better than a control group using traditional methods like internet search. This is the actual value that we have of AI today, AI for the public, med AI, healthcare. So we need a spark. We need a spark of genius to understand what's going on. Now, the university built here a study. We have a systematic human user testing with a randomized controller task, scenario-based evaluation, transcript analysis, and everything that you want. We have to study members, University of Oxford, University of Oxford, Bangor University, Mountain View, San Francisco, Palo Alto, Women and Children's NIS Foundation Trust, Birmingham, UK, Biomedical Engineering, University of Oxford, beautiful, the study design, so they know what they're doing. Let's say, great. The problem is not medical. I'm talking about AI. I'm talking about the design of AI system, the training of AI system, the alignment of AI system, and currently all of this mad AI system, when in contact with the real world, fail. Why? What we have to change in programming the system. Now, there's another dimension we have to look at. Global healthcare provider. And they are now pushing here the use of AI to provide medical advice to the public. And guess what? They are here really interested to increase the profit of their companies for their shareholders, for their global shareholders. No? Because also they understand LLMs now achieve near perfect score in medical licensing examination in the lab. But this does not translate to real world settings. 
So if they now say, okay, we're going to invest heavily in AI and global healthcare, and they discuss this, and they, if they invest, they invest billions of US dollars globally. Maybe you are in the US, maybe you are wherever you are, and your, and your nation decides here to integrate AI. This is done, of course, to help you and improve here the human health system, but it is also to reduce the cost of the global healthcare providers and maybe even increase the profit. So just to be clear about the tension that we have here in this ecosystem. Now in the study here, Oxford tells us that one in six American adults consult AI chatbots for health information at least once a month. And the assumption is they cannot afford to have contact with a doctor to go to the hospital because in some region of our planet, healthcare is really, really expensive. I'm sitting here in Europe. You know, Europe here, a lot of countries have free healthcare, but we pay with our taxes for this. And we decided this is why where we want to spend our taxes. Now, the real world attempts to integrate LLM into the clinical settings with all the medical doctors has also faced significant difficulties. And study here, reference here, other studies for radiology. And they say, hey, AI did not perform better at reading here chest X-rays than without human assistance, with human assistance, and both performed worse than AI alone. So this is not a success story. And also with physicians, they found the same thing. So AI per se is not helpful. It is not the thing that even doctors use how to integrate in the processes, in their clinic, in the hospital, and so on. And now, I was talking here about the global healthcare provider, you know, to try to optimize the benefit, of course, for you as their customer, but also to optimize their profits. And they are talking now about LLM chatbots, for the new front door to healthcare. And I think this could be a critical idea. And they say, of course, it is for patients who lack medical expertise, of course. But they also then say to support the overburdened health system, you know. And those global healthcare providers, they have to pay for this healthcare system in a nation, in a country, in a region, for a big city. You get the idea. So we have here an interesting two-sided problem. We have the people working in the hospital and they have a simple message. And we have here the people here trying to optimize the performance metric for global healthcare providers. And whatever it is you might find, they are not aligned at all. And now they want to integrate AI. Now it becomes interesting. Now, the medical experts have a mixed opinion about the prospect of having LLMs directly advising human patients. And I personally have to say, I absolutely understand this. And they are citing problems of oversight and liability. And if you have a team of a human doctor that uses an AI system, and the question of liability arises here, guess what? Who will be responsible? The human or the AI? Now, on the other side, possible benefit of support here outside of the clinical setting at home is you have here a constant monitoring of the patient. No? AI can take care about standard things, reporting and so on. So there are both. There is here the question of oversight and liability and cost optimization, but there are also the good things, no? where AI yeah, can really be beneficial and improve our conditions, especially if we need medical help. Let's come here to this study. It's a beautiful study. Have a look at this. I know it's outside of AI, but it is so important for AI because it tells us where our AI systems fail, and we fail miserably. Clinical knowledge in LLM does not translate to human interactions. Here you have all the partners and everything. And they care about the AI public deployments, especially in the healthcare sector. And of course, global cooperation have, if you want, if they decide they want to reduce the cost, then this is their main topic. But I want to talk here about how we can optimize the AI to provide a better medical service to humans. So, again, 
participant, participant was identified here, potential health condition, recommended disposition, and course of action, and they were given one of the 10 different medical scenarios, and the scenarios were developed here by a group of three human doctors, <laughs> no synthetic data, unanimously agreed, correct disposition for each, and the scenario then given to a distinct group of four doctors to provide different differential diagnosis. So there was a lot of work involved in this, and you can see this is really interesting because we have here human AI interaction, and this is great because there's so little information that we have about this particular topic. Yeah, as I told you, beautiful GPT-4 Omni, Lama 3, Command R+, Plus, great, and then a control group, what you have at home. And you know, the result is just devastating. Yeah, benchmark, synthetic benchmark data, all the LLMs were great, 90%, great. But you know what? In the real world test, there was a real problem. Condition at least 65% of the conversation with participants, already lower performance in the LLMs alone, observed cases of participants improving, providing incomplete information and LLMs misinterpreting prompts completely. So the moment you move out a little bit, you know, out of distribution from your synthetic benchmark question and answer data set, benchmark data set, the moment you have contact with the real world, it crumbles. Plus, human participants, imagine they did not absolutely follow your other recommendation how to communicate with the AI. People were afraid, confused, whatever. Né? So whatever we have in the field of human LLM interaction, we can report failures and failures and failures. And taken together, study here finds, our findings suggest that the safe deployment of LLM as a public medical assistant will require AI capabilities beyond expert level medical knowledge. So now we have an AI who can perform in a clinical settings operated by an AI expert, an AI coder, but not with real people. We have to retrain our AIs to be able to have real contact, real conversation with real humans outside of the lab in the real world settings. This means we have to generate complete new training data set complete new fine-tuning data sets because we have to take care about situations that they found in this study. And the authors tell us the work highlights the challenges of public deployments of LLMs, of AI systems in general, for direct patient care. And they identify the transmission of information between LLMs or AI in general and the user as a particular point of failure. So both users providing LLMs with incomplete information and LLM suggesting correct answer, but not effectively conveying this information to the users. So we fail on both sides of the data pipeline, of the communication pipeline. And what I really like, they come together and they give us two recommendations. And I mean, for us who build the AI system, and it doesn't matter if you build it here for financial AI or medical AI or whatever you have, I think this is really great insight. Because just to have an AI abstract alone that is not able to communicate with humans, the value of this thing is almost nothing. So, recommendation one. Over the course of the interaction, the LLMs typically, what we have today, offer two to three different possible options. No? Because the LLMs are trained not to give you one answer, but, you know, yeah, just it's a probability distribution. So, so, yeah, the most two, three likely answer and the human can decide. And this is great if you're an expert. But what if you're a normal human being? So this allows users to have the final decision. But this human users perform poorly at making this choice. So therefore, since the LLMs alone perform the task better than most users, especially if a highly delicated met AI expert system, and you have, I don't know, a grandma somewhere sitting in the kitchen and typing here their symptoms into the computer. Improvements are necessary in communication, communicating information from LLMs to user, potentially including more explanation, more structured output, or clear recommendation to help human users to make decisions. We have to provide new training data set. We have to 
change the, the way the AI is answering for the, let's say, average human being. Great. Now recommendation number two. As with real doctor-patient interaction in this study, the users have all the information and choose what to tell the LLMs. And on average, this led to a weaker performance than LLMs give them access to the full scenario. So for certain scenarios, the models consistently failed alone and were corrected by the user. So humans don't provide immediately all necessary information to the doctor or to a med AI system. And now it is the job of the med AI system to have incomplete information and be able to understand what could be, let's say, the 10 possible um, medical conditions for this. So the eye has now to be trained in a different way to deal with this incomplete information, assess the probability distribution of 10 other symptom classes, and then come to a conclusion. So the way we train our eyes today on those beautiful medical exams is completely the wrong way. This is not what the eye will encounter. And there is no emergence of intelligence or super intelligence or HEI or ASI or whatever you have. We have to encode this into training data, in the pre-training information. And with a little bit of luck, we can have a little bit of a task orientation into supervised fine-tuning. And in reinforcement learning is just here the alignment of the system. So we have done almost everything wrong up until now. If we now bring the AI out in the open to the public. Having access to complete information is not representative of the clinical practice, which indicates a need for research to develop AI systems, which are designed for interaction with human users by taking into account factors such as being given incomplete or maybe even incorrect information. Because a human might say, hey, my arm hurts or I don't know, whatever, you know. And the human doesn't know, is there a relation? Is this a symptom? Is this not a symptom? The eye has to be able to enter a conversation, calculate the old probability distribution of all possible solution, further distill it down here, interact with the human in a way that is not there yet, and then maybe we have the AI system that are ready to interact with real humans. I thought it's a beautiful study. We can learn a lot of future AI healthcare. Absolute fantastic. 1,300 humans participated. Thank you to all of you. You provide new insight how we have to build AI systems that are more optimized here to future AI in healthcare. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope there was some new information. If you like it, why not subscribe and I see you in my next video.